so I can't go live on YouTube any longer because, uh, meaning I haven't tried it in like two to three years. But I don't have like a thousand subscribers or I don't have like a million views or whatever the limit is, something like that. So anyway, Gracie's got her umbrella because we're walking in the sun. But we thought we'd just check in from Benjakriti Park, which is this giant uh, pond in the center, man-made of course. Um, but it's pretty cool. I mean, the pond, arguably, I mean, all of Bangkok at one time was a giant uh, marsh, pretty much. But this is pretty cool. We were here like a couple of years ago. I'll actually uh, try and put, uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with this video afterwards. I may edit it and then put it up on YouTube. Uh, because Gracie and I have been in Bangkok now for about one week, and I haven't really done any YouTube updates from there. We've been updating basically uh, all of the videos from when we were down in Cha Am, so the train ride that we took down there. So anyway, uh, and in fact, the last time I was live on video, I used Periscope and got more views on that. So uh, it is about noon, which means it's midnight on the East Coast, 9 p.m. West Coast. So 9 p.m. West Coast isn't too bad, but anyway, go for a walk. Awesome. She's got her fan and her umbrella to keep out as much sun as possible. Uh, but the, um, it's pretty hot here and it's, uh, there's actually not a lot of breeze. I mean, it's pretty hot here. That statement, is, of course, is what you apply to Southeast Asia. <laughs> you certainly apply it to Bangkok uh, pretty much 360 days of the year. There's probably about four or five days where it's not hot. <laughs> um, uh, but it's been nice here. We've had, um, oh, hey Gary, what's up, man? We've had, uh, I mean, as mentioned before, if you've watched any of my videos or know me at all, uh, I'm not a city guy is the as good a statement that applies to me of quite good accuracy. Uh, but I love Bangkok. And uh, so Bangkok, uh, greater Bangkok, they seem to label it fairly accurately with about eight million, eight and a half million people. Um, but of course, you know, no one lives in that amount of surface area, right? In other words, your backyard isn't, uh, isn't able to hold eight million people. So it's not like you interface with eight and a half million people on a daily basis. Unless you're on the BTS, in which case <laughs> you do. <laughs> it's, uh, it's busy. Um, but uh, the, so today's the third here. Uh, and so uh, it is still the second, I believe, on the West Coast. Uh, but greetings to January 3rd on the East Coast. Um, so anyway, uh, but is it pretty much a full work day here uh, again in Bangkok? So that means all the public transportation is back to being um, full. Um, but yeah, so it's, you know, it's, it's one of those deals where like all major cities, right? They have parks, um, you know, New York City, Chicago, all those. Ho Chi Minh City is another one. There's a lot more greenery, I think, in Ho Chi Minh City than in Bangkok. And in Bangkok, it's going away. Uh, there is one area sort of in the center as the Chow Krai River sort of goes around it. Um, and if you Google map uh, Bangkok, you'll see the area that I'm speaking of. Uh, in the middle of it, there's a, um, there's a big sort of public area uh, I mean, it doesn't take up the entire amount of space, but um, anyway, and the other thing too is that right here uh, about ooh, the walking path that we're on, um, about 20% uh, of it is blocked off for construction uh, that they are doing, which is basically they're rehabbing it to some degree. I will double click on this and show you the other side of where I'm at. I think that's how I do it. Oh, there we go. Um, cool. All right, yeah. So this park here has this lake in the center. And what's funny is the last time I did a video when we were here and uploaded it to YouTube, uh, well, a couple things. One is they weren't doing construction, and this was uh, approximately a meter, a meter higher. But when we were here, uh, Gracie also had her fan because she's been Asian this whole time. Um, but I said to myself, you know, if we ever move here, which of course we've done, um, we're going to get bikes and ride around this place. <laughs> and uh, so we don't have bikes yet. Uh, we, have, we have bus passes. <laughs> but um, 
it, it, as we get here, the first sign we see that's in English is a, a bicycle with a red circle and a line through it. No bicycles. <laughs> so that's kind of a drag. Okay, before there's like water in here. There was, yeah, there's, I mean, it's not like there's a, <laughs> it's not like there's a drought, but boy, would that boat be fun right now, right? Um, Family and all people from the East Coast still come. Do they really? That's so cool. That's good. I also hope anyone that you know from years in, uh, I want to say Newport, but I know that's not right. Uh, Laguna Beach. Call you that too. Um, so what's interesting too is that my other video, I was commenting that right here, when I made it, um, was a picture of the king. And, you know, if you know anything about Thailand, you know that, oh my God, you're in a public area and there's a picture of the king. I mean, that's not, <laughs> that's not by any means odd. Uh, that's actually more common than anything. The fact that there's not a picture of, of the current king there is, is odd. Um, but I frequently comment on the fact that, you know, that's not something we do, uh, arguably in the West, but it's certainly not something we do in the United States. Additionally, if there was a picture of our leader, um, the fact that uh, if it were probably anyone but the founding fathers, in air quotes, as well as a couple of other um, ancient leaders that we respect a lot, uh, in addition to potentially John F. Kennedy, uh, I would submit that there would be graffiti on it. <laughs> I don't believe that our current leader, I'm not going to get into politics, but regardless, uh, you know, it always seems like there's so much controversy that if there was a picture of current pres insert current president here up on a big banner in, in a public area that uh, arguably 50% of the people in the country would not particularly like it and probably 1% actually probably less than that people who vandalize regularly would probably have a field day with it so now what's interesting is so we were here like two years ago so to give you an example of so it has not, has not rained since we got here uh, but to give you an example of the weather that exists here in Southeast Asia, um, this was pristine wood um, when we were here two years ago. And now it is totally like rickety and I can see why they are replacing it because um, it doesn't rain now, but come April, um, they will get, I want to say, I believe what I read recently was 300 millimeters of rain a month. That could be wrong. I could probably stop the camera and Google how much rain does Bangkok get in April faster than I can give you incorrect facts. But regardless, it rains a lot. Uh, and uh, torrential downpour, uh, that, those two words put together uh, were invented here. <laughs> uh, but this part, this, this time of the year, there is no, there is no rain. Uh, which is sort of interesting in this part of the country, which is sort of interesting. So, but what's really interesting, so, so this is, and you can see sort of like the dryness of the concrete, and that does not, uh, that does not take long to occur. Um, this is a waterfall, actually, um, and uh, they're actually quite conscious of their natural resources, so amidst the fact that it could be quite beautiful, uh, they're unwilling to, um, for lack of a better term, piss through the water <laughs> uh, just to support my desire for beauty, which is actually quite good. There's huge recycling campaigns that are happening right now. But this is, this is sort of cool. Now, what's, what really is impossible to do, there's three things that bother me about video, uh, YouTube, that sort of thing. Um, the infamous, the camera doesn't do it justice. You cannot um, understand the, the size of these buildings here in uh, Bangkok, if you have not been here. Um, you cannot appreciate how humid it is. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. If you've lived in Florida, Gary, um, and uh, have experienced rain, which I know you have, 
So uh, that's the other thing that I can't translate to. And the, the other, of course, there's no such thing as smell of vision So when I walk down the street in Bangkok and do videos and be like, oh, check out this street food, you're like, yeah, whatever. So they're making hot dogs on the side of the road. No, not really. Um, if you don't know anything about this, this part of the world in street food, um, there's absolutely nothing like it. Uh, <laughs> so, so Gracie, thank you, honey. <laughs> Gracie's sitting over there in the shade and just waved. Which hey. is uh, the reason that's funny, of course, is because uh, two things. One, um, there are many labels that white people have over here. Uh, one that I heard recently was, oh, yeah, white people like to walk around a lot in the sun. <laughs> uh, the one that you probably won't debate is the fact that, yeah, white people like to lay out in the sun and get darker. Um, one that you might not know is Asian people do not like to lay out in the sun and get darker. Uh, Asian people pretty much all of the cream or products that you would apply to your skin in this part of the world, and I'm talking like Dove soap that you would just like buy at 7-Eleven, Vaseline, uh, Vaseline sort of intensive care, like lotion again, that you would buy at, you know, the CVS if you will. Uh, it is difficult to buy it without whitening cream in it, believe it or not. So that's the equivalent of always going to the store in the United States and getting like hand lotion and then having tanning cream in it. <laughs> sort of weird, right? So anyway, um, the reason I bring that up is because of course Gracie is back there in the shade <laughs> uh, waiting for the white guy here to sort of finish my, <laughs> finish my walk throughout the park. Um, now right here where I'm at, it's actually, uh, so this is the cool part um, of really any hot summer day, right? So if like in your, you're in New England, for example, uh, the reason I come home in July and August is because uh, it is the only time in New England when the weather mimics the weather of Southeast Asia. <laughs> uh, so I come home and it's hot and humid. Um, but then you get in the shade, right? And there's a little bit of a breeze and, you know, you immediately use the phrase, oh, wow, this isn't so bad. <laughs> Um, which I rarely uh, use that phrase at the tip of Killington uh, in February. So and, that, um, uh, I, uh, I can't stream this live on YouTube and, uh, well, I mean, I can if I just get my act together and get more people to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, but for the most part, I do the YouTube channel uh, for my mom. Um, and she's not the only one that's made this statement, but interestingly enough, uh, since I've moved over this side of the world, because from Boston it is literally 12 hours away, so it's on the other side of the world. When I lived in California, I would call them approximately once a week on the weekends. And now that I live here, I call them about once a week on the weekends. And the quality of the audio, as you might guess, is identical. And if I had never told them that I moved over here, they wouldn't know. And uh, yet, I'm far away, and it seems so far away, and I get it. Uh, my sponsor made the exact same uh, sort of observation. He's like, yeah, he says, I don't, what, the way he described it, he goes, I, I can't explain the math. It just seems like you're that much further away. Huge local thunderstorms in Thailand like we did in the summers in Hingham. Absolutely. And uh, I will explain it to you this way. When we were kids, and there would be the most intense thunderstorm with lightning that you thought was going to catch your house on fire in Hingham in the summer, and you were like, oh my God, this is so amazing, and then the power would go out, that's the kind of storm they get here on Thursday. <laughs> uh, it is insane. Um, the weather over here is uh, <laughs> excessive. Now, it's fun and it's energetic. I refer to it as energetic rain. Um, because with, <laughs> and that's the other thing too. So we're looking to get a condo, right? And so it's gonna be near what's called the BTS, which if you're from New England is the equivalent of the T. Um, but when uh, you look for a place, you look basically for the amount of time that it's gonna take to walk outdoors like it is here um, from your lobby right of your condo um, to the BTS 
And I will tell you that if you are outdoors for literally more than 10 seconds, um, it is the equivalent of being outdoors for three hours in the pouring rain. So uh, you can combat that with an umbrella, which means from about your chest up, you'll stay dry. <laughs> the rest of your body will get soaking wet. Uh, it will rain uh, one foot in about uh, half an hour here. Um, it will flood and then it will go away. Uh, very, oh, yeah. Oh, really? Well, I mean, I've only spent a few days there in Oregon, but man, if you only get all that drizzle and you don't get the thunder and the lightning, I had the same disappointment with San Diego. And the other thing about San Diego is it's like, oh my God, it's raining in San Diego. No, 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 no. That just means that like your neighbor basically forgot to turn the sprinklers off. There's no such thing as rain in San Diego. There's disappointment in San Diego. That's all there is. There's no, there's no energetic rain. In Southeast Asia, there is so much energetic rain <laughs> that uh, you could go all year and be like, man, thank God I spent all that money patching my roof. <laughs> and then it'll rain one day and you'll think to yourself, I should have spent a whole lot more money patching my roof. <laughs> um, but this is actually kind of nice. I don't recall all these flowers being here when we were here we were here last year. But yeah, these are pretty, pretty awesome. I don't recall uh, that level of uh, density of flowers in the center area there. Um, and again, uh, without any rain in uh, easily the last month, then um, this is all this is all man watered. Uh, literally, there will be a man <laughs> uh, standing out here with a hose. Um, as easy as it would be to install irrigation, and actually it is occasionally installed, um, you will see some of that uh, occasionally. But for the most part, um, it is... Uh, there is a common default setting in people's minds when they are attempting to modernize, right? So, here's one for you, Missy. So, for example, when we were kids, if someone had an irrigation system on Westmoreland Road, you would be like, okay, that's weird, what the hell's your problem? If someone yanked out a green hose and then put one of those, like, old yellow three or five prong spinning sprinkler things and they just like rolled it out on their lawn like the Dows used to do all the time <laughs> and left it there like spinning around you would be like yeah that makes sense or if they had that one that would be like um, where it had the where it had the uh, where it had like kind of it was like kind of an arch like this and it would like all the things would go back and forth anyway the point is is that there was very mechanical ways of watering your lawn so Fast forward to, I don't know, let's say the year 2000, specifically to where Missy and I grew up, and uh, the uh, the commonality of having a irrigation system installed in your front lawn, as well as sod, uh, is more common. And there's a lot of automation to it, and you set it up, and at 5 a.m., sprinklers come off. That's everywhere in San Diego. It happens 365 days a year. Um, and you take the beautifully filtered uh, drinking water that comes out of your tap um, that is totally filtered and absolutely clean and pristine and you take that and instead of drinking it out of the sink in your kitchen you spew it all over your front lawn with the exact same cost that it is to wash your body uh, and you irrigate your grass. Now in Thailand I'm sure they sit around and they say to themselves alright well instead of having Mong Poon walk around with a hose every day that it's not raining and come out here on this park and water the lawn, we're going to install an irrigation system. And the very common discussion will be, yes, but that's taking a job away from a Thai person. And I think that's awesome. Um, if you don't know, Thailand also has a list of jobs that foreigners cannot do. And if you do not know, Thailand has had less than 1% unemployment since I have been coming here and long before I started coming here. 
everybody is working. Not everyone makes a hundred thousand dollars a year, <laughs> um, but it's still pretty good. So, it's, <laughs> I don't know if you guys see the messages. So Gracie just sent me a message. It's okay, you can go around. I'll wait for you on the other side. <laughs> so this is how my, <laughs> this is how my true love and girlfriend um, and, and I communicate. She sits in the shade in Southeast Asia and I walk around broadcasting on the internet. Um, this is how we go for a walk. This is how we get exercise. This is how I remain so slim. Now, this is one of these disappointing times or opportunities, depending upon how you look at it, <laughs> uh, where I have reached uh, the end of the runway <laughs> and I don't have enough lift uh, because of the construction and that 20% of uh, repair that I mentioned that they were doing. Um, it, once I ed re edit this down and I throw it up on YouTube, then there will be, let's see, probably on this side, uh, there will be um, links to the other YouTube videos that I did when Gracie and I did walk fully around the park. And as you can see in this map here, uh, the area in red where I cannot walk was not, cannot walkable. Uh, but green and purple is where I have been, uh, and down there is where we have walked before. So, anyway, I'm going to end the, uh, the video here. I'm absolutely honored that you guys watched. Um, it's, uh, it's cool having friends, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. And I'm honored to call you guys mine. And, uh, hey, let me tell you what. I hope you're living the dream. Because I'll tell you right now, if you're not living the dream, you're doing it wrong. If you feel like coming to Bangkok, get on a plane, come on over here. In the next month, flights are cheap. Once February shows up, come on over here, I'll buy you a smoothie. Ciao.